Crash by Jerry Spinelli, chapters 7 and 8, read for you by Mrs. Shoemaker. Chapter 7 That night I asked my mother how to spell the words and left a note on my door asking my father to wake me up before he went to bed. I heard his voice saying, What's up, chief? before I knew he was in the room. I sat up. Dad, can we go to the Phillies game on Saturday? The short silence after my question gave me the answer. It was too dark to see his face, but I knew what it would look like. A kind of sad, wincy expression. There would be one of three reasons. One, he was just starting up his own business, and he had to work 70-hour weeks just to get it off the ground. Two, he and Mom already had something to do that night. Or three. He was so dead tired from the 70-hour week that he didn't even have the strength to blow his nose, much less leave the house. It was reason number one. Sorry, Crash Meister, he said, laying me back down. We'll get down to the ballpark before the season's over. Night now. Night, Dad. Saturday morning, as usual, I watched the cartoons. Every once in a while, I looked out the window, down the street. I was smack in the middle of Bugs Bunny when I saw them go by. It wasn't a limo, or half a limo. It was just some junk heap. A dork mobile. Rich my buns. That afternoon, I was turning the channels. I came across the Phillies game. I snapped it off. I went to the refrigerator. The night before, we'd had spaghetti and meatballs. I got a meatball, dumped it into a plastic bag, and ran down the street. I dumped out the bag and left it there, right in the middle of their front steps. Chapter 8 That's about as close as I ever got to the webs. Not that they didn't keep asking me over for dinner. They did. I guess they didn't know it was me who meatballed them. Webb even said they could cook some real meat hamburgers just for me, or I could bring my own. They kept asking me to go other places, too. I just said no to everything, or I told them my father was taking me to ball games and stuff. Along around third grade, they finally stopped pestering me, so I could stop pestering my dad. As the years went by, Webb found other members of his own species. A dork here, a nerd there. He gave them buttons. He kept offering them to me, and then finally gave up. Sometimes, when I went past the garage house, I almost shuddered. No toys, no TV, no meat. It made me appreciate things. Sometimes, I'd come home and look at all my stuff and say, Thank you for not sticking me with them. When we started middle school, we were no longer in the same classroom all day. About all that happened between us anymore was ca him calling to me and waving when he saw me on the street or in the hallways. Then, two weeks into sixth grade, Mike DeLuca moved across the street from me. He didn't wear a button. <laughs> First good sign. I asked him, You ain't from North Dakota, are you? He gets this nasty look on his face. He steps towards me. He goes, What if I am? You got a problem? I step toward him. We're nose to nose. Maybe I do. I poke him in the forehead with my finger. He pokes me back. I shove him in the chest. He shoves me back. I punch him in the shoulder. He punches me back. And then, like there was a conductor waving a baton, we both started laughing at the same time. We howled. We roared. We rolled on the ground, and before I even found out the dude's name, I knew we were going to be best friends. He said he was from Pittsburgh, so he was Pennsylvanian, too. And he was going to be a pro football player just like me. I found out all this stuff and more in the first five minutes. By the ten-minute mark, we were wrestling in the grass. At fifteen minutes, we were raiding my refrigerator. Later, we were looking out the front window and saw Webb go by. He was pulling his Conestoga wagon. I told Mike, there's a turtle in there. He squawked. What? Yeah, a turtle. It's his pet. He takes it for a ride in that wagon. He's been doing it almost every day since before first grade. DeLuca didn't say a word. He pulled the curtain aside and watched Webb go up the street, looking like he was seeing a three-eared Easter bunny. 
Finally, he turned to me and said, What grade's he in? Sixth, he said, ours. A slow grin came to his face. His eyes started to twinkle. I told him how I met Webb. I told him everything, buttons to oat burgers. I told him the stuff I did to Webb back then. But I don't bother with him anymore, I said. Mike looked out the window again. It was like watching a cat watching a squirrel. Well, he said, that's gonna change.